Hi, and welcome along to the All Guns Blazing podcast with my man DT in the building. How you doing, DT? <laughs> a very, very stupid question, I know. I, I apologise for asking that because um, after that horror show, we were all excited after lockdown, thinking to ourselves, well, football's back, first game back, Arsenal... We all knew it was going to be a tough game, but there was a lot of optimism around mm. going into that game that, you know, maybe things might be different. <laughs> you know, we, we've been on a good run. We haven't lost a game in 2020. And despite the fact that we've not beaten one of the top six, which is absolutely damning, by the way, we haven't beaten one of the top six teams since 2015. We was thinking to ourselves, you never know. We were on a bit of form. We, you know, the right sounds are coming out. Maybe things could be different. Nothing's changed. It was exactly the same. And it was a 3 0 defeat, same as what they beat us at home. Done in a similar fashion, that it was very easy. And I think the worst thing about it is that when you're looking for a morale boosting performance, because listen, I think the real situation is we all know. The Manchester City are on another level to Arsenal right now. Another level of manager, another level of players. Um, but you're looking for a performance. And despite, you know, a decent start, it was the same old, same old mistakes. Players not playing, team selection. All the same things that we've seen for so long. And embarrassing, really. I don't know if you would agree with me, but I, I feel embarrassed by that performance. Yeah. Well, you wonder why I wanted the season void. <laughs> you know what I mean, it's the thing is, right? There's there's so many things that I take from that game which I'm looking at, and I'm there's not really any positives in that respect. But what I will say is that I've seen a lot of people saying about the team selection, the formation. I think the formation was right in terms of how we were looking to play Manchester City, which was pack the midfield and then spring with the ball over the top. And in that opening 20 minutes, we were doing it brilliantly. Let's be real about it. Um, you know, the first minute, we done it brilliantly. Pressed, won the ball over the top, Eddie's through. You know, we didn't know at the time he was offside. But that was, you know, a very, very positive opening spell. We go and pick up two injuries within 20 minutes, which upsets your rhythm automatically. It, you know, one's bad enough, but two, and two to the spine. It wasn't like a player out wide or something. It was the spine. And Granite Shaka was so important to the way that we were looking to play yesterday. And we lose them. Man City then get a bit of a foothold in the game. And for the last 20 minutes of the first half, they're dominating and Bern Leno keeps us in the game. Mm. That happens in football. It happens. Yeah. The reason why you have a goalkeeper and a goalkeeper that's of the highest level is to do that. You know, we've spent years putting up with Manuel Munia and people like that. So why moan that, you know what I mean? He's doing his job. Now, the, the next stage is very simple. Getting at halftime, nil-nil. Get in at halftime, nil-nil. All right. Nobody would have questioned the lineup, the formation, if we would have gone in at nil-nil. Nobody. Because what happens then is, is that we have 15 minutes to regroup. We have 15 minutes for Mikel Arteta to tweak things based on the substitutions we've had to make and go out again in the second half. And the one thing you will tell the players is keep it simple and keep it tight for the opening 10 minutes. All right, don't do anything stupid. All right, but we'll get to that second half in a second. Literally a minute before halftime, David Luiz. Inexcusable. Inexcusable error. You know, a ball that's played through, there's no pressure on him. There's no reason as to why he would make the mistake. I've watched it again. His right foot is planted. He's he's just not got any kind of like his positioning is completely wrong. He's like complete how you can misjudge 
the ball in that way and, and not get your positioning right. You see it with players sometimes when they swing a leg, which is like a wrong one, and it slices off their feet or something because they haven't positioned themselves correctly. This was the same thing. He never positioned himself correctly. And then he got caught in a place where he's like, oh, I need to swing a leg at it. And it comes off his fire and Sterling's in. And that completely changes everything. That changes the team talk. That changes the mood. That changes the mentality. Everything. But the one thing you would have gone in at halftime still saying is, we're in the game. Mm. It's only 1-0. We've still got a lot of firepower to come off that bench. Let's remember that with Martinelli, with Pepe, with Laka. We've got a lot of firepower. We can turn this game around. Do not do anything stupid in the opening 10 minutes of the second half. Let's set and let's regroup and go again. What does David Luiz do? Game done. Finished. In the first five minutes of the second half. Everything is out of the window. And then... When Arteta makes his substitutions and he brings on the likes of um, Maitland-Niles and stuff like that, and people are going, why not Pepe? Why not Martinelli? Because there's no point. What is the point in bringing them on to run around like a headless chicken for 20 minutes, chasing a ball? Worry about Saturday. Let's just concentrate on that because we're not winning the game. We're not getting anything out of this game. All we can do is get out of there with damage limitation. Do what, not let it be five, six or seven. What did you make of David Luiz's comments after the game? Because, you know, he, he voluntarily came out, faced the cameras and said, apologise and said, you know, it's all my fault. It wasn't the team. It was all my fault because, I, um, you know, basically it was. <laughs> I mean, like you said, the first mm. goal, honestly... We, we both have our own little amateur teams, right? And if any of our defenders would have made that same mistake, both of us would have been cussing him. You know what I mean? And saying, yeah. what are you doing, right? And he's making that at the oh, high school. Right. And, the thing- you know, and then the second one, you know, let's, let's have it right. It's now, this guy has done that three times in three major games, right? He did, he got spun against Liverpool, pulled back Mane, right? Got sent That's off. Salah, wasn't it? Paul got Salah. Or Salah, which <laughs> one of them and got sent mm. off. Yeah. Effectively, game over. 10 men against Liverpool. We went to Chelsea. Same thing. Pulls back a player, gets sent off, right? Down to 10 men. Heroics by the rest of the guys to get it back to a draw. And then he does the same thing against Manchester City. And basically, if you've got a defender that in three of the biggest games, you brought in this guy as an experienced player to play in just those type of games. He's actually proven himself. The evidence is there to be a liability. Mm. In those games, he's an absolute liability. But he's come yeah. out, to be fair to him, he's come out and he said, I'm sorry and I apologise. But he then also said something that was a bit baffling in that he's saying something about, you know, I should have made a decision a few months ago. And, and that's what I couldn't work out because I'm like, what's it's that thing about? You know what I mean? You're, you, yeah. you know, you've got this contract that's like till the end of the season plus an extension. Yeah. So about that, is it, well, what, what's the what's the decision you should have made? Should it have been to well, after, after, a, after a bad performance against Chelsea? I don't yeah, know. Um, I'm trying to work out what that was about. Do you know what? The one thing I've said, I, I don't think he got sent off against Liverpool. I think he just gave away the penalty. Because if you remember, he also got spun for the third goal. I think it was Mo Salah. So I think he was still on the pitch, but he gave away the penalty. I get what you're saying. It's free games, free penalties, free crucial bit, um, decisions. And the Liverpool one was so reminiscent to last night. We do, well, we do so well for 40 minutes hanging in there, had chances against Liverpool. We actually had good chances against Liverpool, yeah. if you remember, Pepe and Aubameyang. So even better than last night. We can see the stupid goal from a corner, start of the second half, David Luiz gives away a penalty, game's over. Even, yeah. the game against, even the game against Olympiacos, again, another big game. When, you know, um, Aubameyang goes down the end, scores that bicycle kick, he was at fault for that as well, Luiz. Again, he I was at fault. He dumped under it, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, 
this guy is supposed to, and, and you know what? Like, um, I was uh on WhatsApp with actually Jordan. You know Jordan who comes on sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Jordan was saying, "Yeah, he goes, I told you, Robbie, right?" Because I remember at the time I was one of those fans, and there was a lot of us who said, "Well, for eight million, what we got to lose?" And he had actually picked up under Arteta. I mean, under Arteta, he was playing. He was under the best form that he's been under since he's been at Arsenal, especially in his his passing delivery. He was winning a lot of aerial battles and that. But the problem with him is that he's always, always, always got a mistake in him. And the mistakes that he makes are big mistakes. I mean, he's done, isn't he? I mean, there's no his contract's up at the end of the season. And during the lockdown thing, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of talk talking about, you know, because it emerged. Everyone thought he had two years. It emerged that he's only got one year. Yeah. A year extended, if you right. And I remember at the time when I, that was sort of revealed, and I did a couple of shows around it, and people were people were saying, "How dumb are Arsenal?" You know what I mean? To not sign him up for two years. And I'm thinking now nah, that's one of the smartest decisions they ever made because surely, yeah. surely they're not going to extend his contract. He's saying yesterday that um, Arteta wants to keep him, but what for? More mistakes? He's going to make. Yeah. More, you know, the, the, the thing is. Do you know what, Robbie? When I was looking at that interview, it was so confusing because it, it sounded like that he, you know, could have made a decision a couple of months ago. Why didn't he make the decision? Was he thinking of leaving? Now he's regretting that he didn't make that decision before and now his future's in the balance because maybe where he could have gone, don't want him. I don't know. There were so many ways you can take that. But at the same time as well, um, you know, I think it's only been in the last half hour or so since... We've been getting ready to do this, but his agent has um, come out and said that things will be sorted at Arsenal this week. I think I had the quote, actually, and I'll tell you exactly what was said. Um, and it's really interesting as well, because it's not just about David Luiz, um, but he was speaking to TalkSport and he turned around and said that the situation from Arsenal's point of view will be resolved this week, not just David Luiz's situation, there are several issues within the whole structure that will be resolved. Maybe he's talking about the fact that, the, the again, <laughs> this club's a mess, man. So you've got his contract that you don't know whether is he staying or is he going at the end of the season. You've got Aubameyang's contract. He hasn't signed a new deal yet. And he looked very, his body language didn't look great last night. You've got mm. Saka's contract. He hasn't signed a new deal. You've got Cedric, who's on loan. That runs out at the end of the season. Pablo he Mario, you know, you know, huh? Cedric's not played a single minute. He's done, he's, more on a... he's done more on Arsenal TV than he has on the pitch. Exactly. Not one minute on the pitch, right? And his contract, maybe he's talking about that. Because remember, at the end of June, Effectively, their contracts run out, and uh, no, I don't know. I don't think the club has an extension for these contracts. I don't think so. There are several issues within the whole structure that will be resolved. The whole structure, well, it That's is a it. Yeah, I, I, That's I know. A it's you know, a, you, got, you got remember, he's, he's good friends, he's very good friends with Raul Sinelli, very, very good friends. He's also very closely connected to Manchester City, which means he will have known and had a relationship with Mikel Arteta in his three years while he was there. Mikel Arteta coming out the other day. Now, let's look, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to look at, right? And I've said this to you so many times. The reason why I don't completely lose my head at the moment and the reason why you might not see me going mad like I was three years ago at Bayern Munich or whatever is because I understand that it's a rebuilding process and I understand that Mikel Arteta is taking on a mammoth job and he's not had a single window. Um, oh, he had the January window, yeah, but no real time and a real proper window to, you know, go and implement his way, his style. I'm seeing enough with what he's got that I like what he's doing, but he needs help. Let's not beat around the bush here, Robbie. He needs help. And we can sit here all day and we can laugh. We can dissect it. We can do whatever we want. Mikel Arteta needs help. 
And what I liked about him the other day was when he turned around and said very, very clearly that we need backing, we need to go and, you know, invest, or we're going to fall further behind. And I have not come here to let that happen. That's so great. Unless, now, unless now, you know, things have gone on behind the scenes because it looks like things are going on behind the scenes, right? Oh, We're yeah. hearing in the last, look, listen, Robbie, listen, right? All through lockdown, yeah? We hear all these positive things. We hear all this nice stuff. Everything's this, everything's that. And then over the last week, two weeks or so, we're hearing a lot coming out of the club that's not great. We're hearing about Arteta wanting to have Zoom meetings with the whole team and certain players are saying, oh, I'm not available. Like they've got something better to do. You're in lockdown. Where are you going? Do you know what I mean? To the garden. You ain't got nothing better to do, have you? Go to the meeting. And he's obviously stamping his authority. Meza Ozil, it's not tactical why he was left out of the squad. 20 players and Meza Ozil's not in the 20. Right, we're gonna, listen, we're going to get back to that, right? We're going to come, we will come to Ozil, right? Let me just focus a minute on because we focus on David Luiz. We all saw what he did. Absolutely dreadful. Cross us all the game. Even he admitted it himself, right? Another thing that could possibly have cost us all the game, though, and now we're going to need to look at Mikel Arteta. The team selection, right? Why is Eddie and Ketia, right? And I've got nothing, right? I think this is a great young prospect that we have here, yeah? Well, we're playing against Manchester City, right? We may not get many chances. Why is Eddie Nketiah starting to get um, ahead of Lacazette? Why is Eddie Nketiah starting ahead of Martinelli? Why? Well, how does he make it ahead of those two players? Do you exactly. think, well, that Arteta had too many young players in that team? Remember the opposition. We're not playing. If, it, if that team was against Brighton, more I might. You're playing against, or did he just say to himself, you know what, we're probably not going to win this anyway, so I'm going to keep those guys back like Pepe. Uh -huh. like, well, why why do we buy Pepe if he's going to be, he didn't even get on the pitch. Listen. This is weird. I mean, if, if, hold on, DT, just for your answer that. If Unai Emery would have selected that team, what would you have said? Be honest. Right. Unai honest. Emery, listen, Unai Emery selected a team very reminiscent to that when we played at Anfield. And what did you with, say? With Joe Willock and that in the midfield. We I said, let's see how it goes. And wait, and just like the Liverpool game, for 40 minutes, it was actually working. If we would have gone in at half time, nil nil, Robbie, you wouldn't have questioned it. Nobody would have questioned it. Shot on target in the whole game. game. The re listen, the reason why we question it is because we lost. You never question no, it when it goes back. Yeah, but what I'm saying yeah, is again. Yeah, but listen, but this is the issue, yeah? It was not Mikel Arteta's fault, all right? He set up a team. He set up a team that he thought was best suited for this style, yeah? He has two injuries in the first 20 minutes, and then and then a defensive error sends us in at halftime, 1-0 down. No, all that. No, all that. You've seen that already. Listen, no, no, wait, wait. It's about game plan, all right? Game management. We didn't need to have a shot on goal in the first half. It's not about that. We could have one shot on goal all game and it could be in the 90th minute. Are you going to moan? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, will you just listen to me for a second? Yeah? We could go all game without a shot on goal. We get one shot on goal in the 90th minute and win the game, yeah? Are you going to turn around and moan that we didn't have a shot on goal in the first half? Of course we you ain't. Didn't win. We didn't no. win. Robbie, I know we didn't, but it was not Mikel Arteta's fault why we didn't. It wasn't his fault. Yes, there's questions as to why Eddie and Ketty is playing ahead of these other players. But in terms of the formation and that, there's no issue. Hold on, let me, no let, me, let me just say, listen, one second. You say that, yeah, but basically you've got a young kid in Eddie and Ketty up front, yeah, who scored, was it, uh, one goal this season, right, in the Premier League. You've got Martinelli there, who came in and when he deputised for Aubameyang in two, two out of those three games he scored. We saw that even the game against Chelsea, that run he did. He, he's been excellent this season. A lot of people have been saying he's been our best player. You've got Nicolas Pepe, if I remember rightly, didn't he, um, didn't he score in the last game? Well, he scored a few goals and is the sort of player that can trouble 
you know, defenders with his dribbling ability and stuff like that. You've got Lacazette, who scored in both the friendlies and scored in the last game before lockdown. How is Eddie starting in front of those guys? Listen, if you, if you select a team as a manager and you win the game, or you get out there with a 1-1 draw because of your tactics, you get praised, yeah? Right? This is where you're getting wrong what you're saying. But when you lose, your tactics come under scrutiny because that means your tactics on the night that you thought would work didn't. That means you got your tactics wrong, no. right? No, yes. No, 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 no. Yes, no. Hold, hold on a second. Hold on. No. And, the reason, and the reason why I say that, taking the David Luiz thing out of it because David Luiz cost him the game and has ruined his tactics, but we did not put one shot on target. We've got you're a Bamiyang. Hold on. Hold no, on. You're not listening. Bamiyang, no. Not you're one not listening. Shot. You're not listening, Robbie. You're not listening. Yeah? The game plan. We didn't need to have a shot on goal in the first half. How are you going to win then if you don't have a shot on goal? Listen to me. It's like talking to a fucking wall with you, man. How are you going to win a game if you don't have a Will shot? Turn. Will you shut up and listen for a second, man? How are you going to win? Explain listen. that to me. Listen. Jesus. The tactics are fine. A mistake goes and puts us on the back foot and we're one nil behind. So the tactics go out of the window, which is the reason why you question it. Okay? But up until the mistake... Everything was fine. The game plan was going right. And the, remember as well, the game plan had two huge moments to send it off course. All right? We knew that we were weathering the storm in that last 20 minutes for Manchester City. That was going to happen. At some point in the game, that was going to happen. But we go in at half time, and the game plan has worked. Then what happens is you go out in the second half and you can then open up a bit more. You can be more expansive. You can then get your shots on goal. You can then try and do what you need to do to have, you know, to, to win the game. But what I'm saying is, is that in the first half, it's about containment. If we get chances and something comes along, yeah, that you do that. But it's about picking the right moment. And it was very clear what style that we were trying to play. Pack the midfield, break over the top. We tried it. First minute. If Eddie wasn't offside, it was a bad miss. That was brilliant, you know, and that was in the first minute. And there were two other chances for him in the first 20 minutes as well. So what I'm saying is, is that because of David Luiz right on half time, it changed everything. They didn't even have an opportunity to get their foothold back into the game in the second half because as soon as it started, he gives away a penalty. It's 2 0, and we're down to 10 men. And at that okay. moment, and at that moment, when we're down to 10 men, you can write the second half off. It's done. It's finished. We're not going to have shots on goal. We're not going to win the game. It's done, Robbie. It's finished. Let me, let me, ask, you, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. No, listen, yeah. what I'm saying is, listen, if he never got sent off and he never gave away that penalty, then we could have done more in that second half and you could have seen the tactics evolving and saw more from basically us. Basically, what you're saying is, once we go down 2 0, just give up. Basically, against Man City, we had no choice. So just you wave the white flag off to that give up. Oh, mate, Robbie, seriously. If you look, if you try and attack Manchester City with 11 men, they can pick you off at will. If you try and attack Manchester City with 10 men, you will get battered, annihilated. That would have been. Seven, six, seven, eight, easily. Even in that last 10 minutes when they put the board up for 11 minutes, yeah, and the players were dead on their feet at that point, yeah, how many chances did Manchester City have in injury time? So let, me, let, me ask, let me ask you a question. So what you're basically saying to me is that David Luiz had got sent off um, after, I think it's just as the second half begun, literally, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. What you're basically saying to me is that after that, wave the white flag. Don't bother to. Uh, we we got no chance. It's not about wave the white flag. It's well, about no, no, no. What, what are you no, saying? No, 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 
No, no, no, no, get it right. It's not about wave the white flag in that sense. It's about understanding the situation. You are not going to get back into that game. You are, listen, Robbie, do not be deluded. No, listen, I'm sorry. It's not about, no, 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 it's not about mentality. It is. You, you are not getting back into you, game. Robbie. Robbie, listen, it's damage limitation. That's damage why... limitation. No. When you let me speak, yeah, it's damage limitation. The one thing you don't want to do is get battered six, seven, eight nil. The last thing you want. And the fact is, we've got a game in three days time after that. Wait, I'm still speaking. We've got a game days after that. That game is done. Why do you think Mikel Arteta himself, after the game, said this game's in the bin? Off the hard drive, never happened. Because you can't take nothing from that. At 2-0, uh, with 10 men against Manchester City, the game's done, Robbie. Right, let, me, done. Let, me, let me talk now. You've had a lot to say, yeah? For me... How you've just spoken there sums up the reason why Arsenal, right? Yeah, let me talk. What our mentality is disgusting. If that is how, and I'm hoping Arteta doesn't have the same attitude as you, right? But if our attitude is that just oh, wow. at the start of the second half, we go down 2 0 and we're down to 10 men, that basically damage limitation, we still got about 40 minutes to play. That's disgusting. I don't care. Right. Disgusting. You're, 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 try and get back. Try and get back in the game. Try and get a goal back. Right. That should be, <laughs> that should be, that should be the thing. Yeah. That should be the thing. Right. Try and get a goal back, and then you never know. Maybe we could nick an equalizer before the end. Right. Right. Let me, because you, you, why are you talking? All right. Right. L listen to me now. Right. You are trying so hard to defend Mikel Arteta, right? It's unbelievable. Oh I, I love Arteta. I love what he's done since he's come in. Oh but I'm my God. We did not have a shot on target in the whole game. In that, that is, see, see, this is what you do. You, you no, can, you can you land. Land. Or you start, you know, being very disrespectful. I'm, I'm saying to you, right? Oh that my we God. did not have a shot on target in the whole game. It's embarrassing. My and you've got God. Pepe on the bench. You've got Lacazette on the bench. You've got Martinelli, right? So somebody has to... If Let me tell you something, right? If you go into a game, right, and your tactic is to be defensive, yeah, and you lose the game, your tactics did not work. Oh my God. Do you understand in that? If you, you go into a game to be if you go into a game to be hold on. If you go into a game to be defensive and you get a draw, or you win the game, your tactics worked. If you lose the game, your tactics failed. If during the game something's happened, like Louise gets sent off and that, you as a manager then have to rethink your tactics. What do That's I do it. now? My, maybe my game plan, maybe I can't defend it out. Maybe I need to try something different. Whatever Arteta tried yesterday, it did not work. Now, I know Luis messed up in the game. But even so, we did not have a shot on target. We've got a player who's going for the golden boot. Who hardly, I don't even think he hardly had a shot, on, you know, a shot anywhere in the whole game. He was completely wasted out. On that left hand side, we got Martinelli, who, as I said, has been having a great season, not even used. Why didn't he start? Why didn't Lacazette start? It, uh, to me, I'm sorry, but there's questions need to be asked as well of Mikel Arteta and his team selection. It didn't seem to me like he got his team selection right yesterday. And I, I would love to be a fly on the wall, you know, to 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 hear what he'd have to honestly say about that. To to say. You know, because especially with the other players, to, to think what they thought of his team selection. Because right from the start of the game, and you were there, we were watching it with several of us, we were all kind of like, that's a strange team. That's a strange team. And we lost the game. You're not close your uh, eyes and stuff like that. The reality of it, we have not beaten a top six team since 2015 away from home, right? And with attitudes like that, 
that oh it's over at two 0 just on the, just after half time or we let's just not get battered. No, I want my team to go out on the shield, man. Have a go, create some no. chances. You've you seen ain't creating any chances. You ain't creating any. You are down to ten men against Manchester City. You're not creating any chances. You need to understand the situation. You would be, you know, the funniest thing, this is why I have to sit here and laugh, because if we would have turned around in that after he got sent off and went, you know what, let's just go for it. Yeah. And Man City go up the other end and pick us off, which they would have done very easily and battered us 6 or 7 nil. You'd be sitting here now going, why did we do that? Why are we so stupid? Why was there no we game management? Why don't we, we still got back with you? Would you be right if we would have gone for it and Man City just went, I don't pick know. you off, pick you Please. off, off you go, and we, they won the game six or seven nil? Would you sit there and say, Oh, at least we went out on our shield? Oh, well, I never said, I never said, I never said, the game, I never said, said, I never the game was, was over. Go for it. I never said, I never said, I never said, I never said no, no, don't sit there and turn around and say about my attitude, yeah, because there was fuck all wrong in what I'm saying to you, yeah, the game was done. And it was about game management because we've got nine games left, yeah? That was a game in hand. The game was finished, all right? First and foremost, it's the first game back in three months. We've already lost two players to injury, yeah? Let's get out of here. Damage limitation. The game is over. Like it or not, the game is over. 3-0 nil, nil is actually a very good scoreline for us in the end when you look at the balance of play in that second half. When you look at the balance of play, in the final 11 minutes of injury time, they could have made it six or seven. That's what I'm saying to you, DT. What I'm saying to you, right, is that we got battered anyway. We got battered. If it weren't for Bern Leno, we would still have lost six or seven, right? The tactics did not work from Mikel Arteta. The team selection was strange, and the team selection in my opinion, was wrong. I'm giving my opinion, and a lot of fans out there were saying that, and if that had been Emery or, or, or Wenger or that, we would have been criticising as well, right? And I know we all trying to get behind Mikel Arteta, but if you get it wrong, I'm going to say you got it wrong. I don't care, you know what I mean? I'm going to say you got it wrong. I don't care if people are saying, oh, you're not towing the party line or whatever. He got his tactics wrong yesterday, right? We did not have a shot. One one of the areas of strength at Arsenal, right, is that we've got some good attacking players, right? And not only did he not use half of them, right, the, the very best ones, right, we did not even have a shot on goal for the whole game. And for me, a club like Arsenal Football Club, that is embarrassing. Embarrassing. Yeah, and, and, and I'm sorry, you know what I mean? It's not good enough. And, and yet again, going away to a top six club, defeat. It's, 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 you know what I mean? And now, and I know obviously that Arteta has a lot to do. We all know that. We've been saying that from before the game. But I'm sorry, he as well is going to, you know, he, he's not going to get as much as we want, right? If this sort of record continues away from home to them big clubs, he's not going to get a lot of time either. That's the way it goes when it comes to managers in modern day football. You don't get time. So, you know, well, people... don't, try, don't try and blame him for yesterday. Don't try and blame him for yesterday. Huh? I'm not blaming him fully. The, the person who's most at fault for yesterday is David Luiz, but also Mikel Arteta has to take some blame for his team selection, in my opinion, and the fact that we didn't create anything in the whole game. That is his decision, the team that he put out on the pitch, and we didn't create anything. And it was his decision to go with Eddie and Ketia over Martinelli, over Lacazette. And to me, that decision was wrong. Again, you're not listening. This is where you're not listening to me. We created three chances in the opening 15 minutes and Eddie missed all three of them. First chance we created was offside. So you can't even count. Uh, no, we had a chance after where Eddie had a chance in the inside the box and he never shifted it and got his shot away when he could have easily done it. And there was the one where the ball was laid in across the box and he went and kicked it out for a goal kick. When who, he should be who, who, who did? Who did? Eddie, he, Eddie who, had three who, chances, three chances in the opening 15 minutes. Eddie, who, Eddie had three chances? Yeah. And who selected him? 
Yeah, but hold on a minute, Robbie. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Who's selected him? Hold on a minute. I've told you very clearly that that's the one position that we can question. Not the formation, but what I'm saying to you is that there's no issue. David Luiz doesn't make that mistake before, before half time. We don't question anything at half time. We're happy. We go in and say, right, regroup, nil, nil, perfect. Every single person would have took your hand off at that. Now in the second half, we let off the reins a little bit and we can do what we need to do. All right. And then we would probably get our shots on target. We could bring on Pepe. We could bring on Martinelli. But at the point we're two nil down and the game's done, it's about shutting up shop. Let's get out of here. Damage limitation. Don't bother risking Pepe. Don't bother risking Martinelli. We've got a game on Saturday. Let's focus on that now. And even Mikel Arteta has said, we've got to wipe that one out. You could have the perfect laid, the most perfect laid foundations and, and tactics for a game and everything. And then bang, something happens that's out of your control. Granite Shaka getting injured was out of his control. Pablo Mari getting injured, out of his control. David Luiz making a mistake, out of his control. David Luiz giving away a penalty and getting sent off, out of his control. Everything it, that... It, any any in catcher, as you said, you said, not me, as you mm -hmm. said, missing three chances in his control because he selected it. Yeah, but he trusted him. He trusted him to and do it. Time game, as you said, and, yeah. and those, those three chances that you just spoke about here, yeah, what was the score at that time when he missed those chances? Nil-nil. But you've but you've also just said we created no chances, and I've just gave you three examples in the first. No, no, I said, no, no, I said we didn't have any shots. Doesn't mean we had no shots on target in the whole game. Yeah, no, we never had no shots on target, but we created chances. So what I'm saying is the tactics and the formation was not an issue. It wasn't an issue, Robbie, because in the first yeah, 20 sure. minutes, then, no, it wasn't because in I'm the opening. About, I'm not about the formation. Hold on, hold on. Do you remember in the opening 20 minutes? Because I remember this on the I'm live stream. In the opening 20 minutes, yeah, before David Luiz just come on and Mary got injured, yeah, they put a thing up in the bottom corner, which was the possession. Do you remember? Because me and you yeah. turned around straight away and said it, and it was 50-50. Yeah. yeah. Because in the opening 20 minutes, we done everything right. We'd done everything that Mikel Arteta had set us out to do. We pressed the middle, we pressed the front, we got the ball out early and we were springing on the break. And there's also, in that opening 20 minutes, and a lot of people have forgot this, <coughs> Aubameyang made two unbelievable runs and the ball was not given to him. And he was through. And do you know why that pisses me off more than anything? And we joked about this towards the end, right? When I said this, you lot all laughed at me. We watched the training videos this week, yeah? Do you remember? And I said to you, I said about how we see all these training videos. I said, how much of them training videos that they don't show us are the shit? We get to see the nice bits. And I said, but there was one thing that I saw in the training video this week, and it's something that we all spoke about even before the game. And that was when Aubameyang was out on the left-hand side in training. He got the ball, gave it, spun burst into space and the ball was given back to him. He skinned holding, went one-on-one -on -one with a keeper, round him in. He, identical, two times last night, identical to that training video. The difference is nobody gave the ball back to him. Why? What are you bothering practicing that in training if you're not going to implement the ideas? So it's very evident that that's what they're working on in training, what Mikel Arteta wants them to do. Right, and Aubameyang was doing it. He peeled off. He made the run. Go and look at the steals. He was fucking in. They played such a high line. But the even ball. If, you know, you know the other thing is, even if right, we're gonna play that formation. I just think, what a waste of a player that we got Aubameyang playing out on that left hand side. You, 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 what, that's what again. Why I've got a question this Eddie thing. Then in that case, then put Aubameyang down the middle. Play Saka or Martinelli on one of those wings and play Pepe or Reese Nelson on the other wing. And have your striker who scored, you know, one of the top goal scorers in this league playing down the middle. I don't understand this Eddie thing. We, at the moment, he's a good young player. He's going to be a very good player. But that game yesterday was not, in my opinion, I said it right at the start, that's not the game for Eddie and Ketcher. That's the game for your big guys, your 
Aubameyang down the middle or Lacazette down the middle. That's the game for them. And I just thought that that was he got that wrong. And then obviously the next, the big talking point, even before, and again, this is another thing that keeps happening at Arsenal, that before a ball's even kicked, there's massive talking points. And again, yet again, Mesut Ozil, right? You got a, you can use nine substitutes in a game, and he's not even on the bench. Five. And five. Sorry, you can use you can use five substitutes, but you can have nine subs sat down on your bench, and he's not even one of the nine. What what's going on? If this guy's not, if I mean, Mikel Arteta come out and said he's tactical. If it's tactical that the guy is three hundred and fifty thousand pounds a week, your top earner supposed to be your main guy, you leave him out of games like this, then I do not understand what's the point of him even being here anymore. Pay him off. Just pay off. Take a hit. Pay him off in the summer and move on from him. That's what I think. We are now, because we we before a ball is kicked in these games, time after time when we go into these big teams, there's always the Mesut Ozil controversy. And he thought he was playing because the day before he put on his Instagram, now he's going back back to business or something he put on it. I mean, let's just pay him off. What, would you agree with that? Yeah. How much would his wage cost for the last year? Is just give him and let him go. You know what I mean? Because I know, I you know, why are we talking about this guy every time? The game let me, let me, that can't be good for the dressing room. Wait there, wait there. Let me just, I'm just doing this for the banter. Hold on a minute. <laughs> so he's on, three, he's on 350 grand a week, yeah? Yeah. So you times that by a month, right? So he's on, <laughs> fucking hell. So he's on 1.4. He's on about, huh? this is of course before tax, yeah? But he's on 1.4 million a month, right? And then you times that by 12. <laughs> Yeah, that he's on see, he's on sixteen point eight million a see a year, and then what what would he be taxed with that forty percent? So you take away forty percent, and then you're talking like he's still getting over nearly seven million odd pounds a year for, for sitting at home. As someone right yesterday probably playing the new version of Fortnite, right? Yeah. The guy, if listen, I don't know, I don't even blame him now because this is that's the contract they put him on. But I'm saying he's becoming toxic now because, and not necessarily his fault, whatever. I don't know what's going on out there, right? But he's always the talking point. Mm -hmm. And to me, we've seen listen, you can have a player that you bought for 40 million and then he's only worth 20 million. And we've seen Barcelona got players like that, many other clubs just take the hit. Let the guy go in the summer. I don't want another year. This is me personally speaking. I don't want another year of every time we've got a game we're discussing Mesut Ozil. They obviously don't rate him. If, mm. if you've got a squad full of kids as well and you can't even make a nine-man bench, nine, what is the point of him being here? No. And it, you know, I am going by what Mikel Arteta said because he didn't say it was an argument. He didn't say it was uh, any discipline arm um, things. He said it was tactical. Yeah. So yeah. if you can't if you can't rely on your most expensive player because he tactically does not fit the system you want to play, then I would rather. I, look, listen. There's nobody on AFTV that's defended Urzel more than me. First and foremost, fact. All right, but. I would rather turn around and say, you know what, here's 16 million pounds. We buy out the last year of your contract. Bye bye. Go. Go to no. Uno Emery. Uno Emery used to say the same thing, tactical, right? Because he didn't want to play him either. What's the point? Just give him the money. Yeah. Let him leave. That's my opinion. Let him leave. He obviously, he obviously is unhappy. We're unhappy with him, or the management and everybody is unhappy with him. Instead of it, because every it's not good. Before the game had started, we were all there watching the game. What are we talking about? Urzel. Yeah. yeah. Why are we not playing? What's happened? 
checking our phones. What's the statement? Is a statement being made? Is he put? Oh, come on. What's what? I, does know, I, I would rather he, he goes. I would rather that it's instead of every week questioning why he might not be in the team or in the squad or he plays bad or because you know what I mean. Even when he plays, yeah, you still talk about Meza Ozil. Because he doesn't get an assist, you all talk about it. What's happening? Why has he done this? Oh, look at that. He was awful today. You know, even when Mesut Ozil don't actually play bad, everyone says he plays bad. And we all talk about Mesut Ozil, like it or not, we always talk about him. So I would rather the club now say, right, we've had X amount of years service out of him. We got our money's worth, as far as I'm concerned, because we did have good years out of him at the beginning, regardless of what people might say. And... I look at it now and I say 16 odd million pounds, get rid of him. You take 350 grand a week off the wage bill, invest that on somebody better, on somebody that's worthwhile. Or that you can first and foremost, you can use some of that 350 grand a week to help convince Abamyang to stay. And you and can it's then it's not like at the moment. Well, he's not contributing enough, he's not even playing. So I don't what I mean? Mean. Uh, uh, nothing, I'm sorry, it's, it's not tactical, Robbie. It's not tactical. It's not. We are uh, look. It's it's honourable what Mikel Arteta is doing. I suppose he comes from the same train of thought as Arsene Wenger, being in the same dressing room as him, where he likes to keep certain things in house. And I said to you yesterday, there's certain things that I do feel should be kept in house. But then there's a few things where I like the players to be called out. You know when. Yeah. When, when Mikel Arteta called out Gwendozi, for example, and they went to Dubai and he pissed around, all right? Good. Let that come out that, you know, you're not going to tolerate that. When Maitland Niles has not been pulling his weight, you come out and talk about it. Cool. Let that come out, all right? But then there's certain things you do need to keep behind closed doors because you don't need to air your dirty laundry with everything. There's, there's things that you can come out with and there's things that you shouldn't. But we're not stupid, all right? There's not one person... In this planet, apart from anyone that loves Meza Ozil, that can tell me that that was a genuinely genuine tactical reason as to why he was not in the 20-man squad. I'm sorry, but maybe you can get an argument for saying it's tactical why he never started. Because when you look at the formation and the way we played, agree. Meza Ozil would never have pressed like that and done that job. Cool. If he's on the bench, you understand he's there in case we need to change things and whether he's the type of player we were able to bring on and we might change the formation or whatever, that's fine. No one will argue there. But to completely take him out of the squad and not have him as an, even, as an option, sorry, sorry, no. What was the bench last night? What was the bench, actually? Was it Pepe, um, Lacazette, Rhys Nelson? Uh, um, who's a, there's two subs who came, David Luiz, of course. Um, yeah, great, cheers for that. David Luiz, uh, I said Reese Nelson already, didn't I? Uh, Ainsley, that's five, there's still four more. Who else came on? That's what I'm thinking. I'm trying to, I'm trying to who actually find out. Who came on for Xhaka? Oh, it's Sabayas. Tobias. Uh, to Martinez, score. seven. Martinelli, eight. And I forget who else now. That's eight. Who else? Jesus, man. Anyway, that's eight of them. And he's not even, you know, out of nine. And he didn't even make the bench. And that tells you all you need to know. And that, look how many young players is there. You well, know, I, I know how I find it actually. <sighs> you keep talking because huh? I'm, inter I'm interested. To see I, I'm just interested to see another name there where you could go. Right here we go. Um, so the squad was the bench was Martinez, David Luiz, Kalazinak. Oh, that's the yeah, that's the uh, one. Ayer, Nelson, Pepe, Martinelli, Lacazette. So you're looking at that and you're saying, for example, I would say you've kind of got to have a couple of defenders in there. And yeah, it showed with the injuries we got. What, you're telling me that Maitland-Niles is ahead of him? <laughs> That's to change the 
a joke. It's a joke. You and know, I you're looking at that and you're saying, yes, yeah, Sobias is your midfield cover. Reese Nelson. So you've got Reese Nelson's a winger. Pepe's a winger. Martinelli's a winger slash striker. And Lacquer's a, a striker. So what? You're looking at the names on that substitutes bench. You've got to say what Maitland-Niles was... Maitland-Niles uh, a, a better option than Mesut Ozil. Well, there you go then. That, that's your answer right there, man. That's your answer right yeah, there. I mean, um... You know, we, we can we can pour over it for ages, right? What do we have to do now? Brighton's coming up at the weekend. Now, that's an absolute must-win game. Must-win. Any any harbouring... Or, I mean, I think that it hopes the top four is over anyway, but any harbouring of even that fifth place, which could possibly bring Champions League football, for, um, perhaps, Brighton, we have to win it. If we, if we lose that game, forget it. I don't, I don't even think we'll make the top six if we lose that game. If we draw that game, I don't think we're going to do anything this season either. That After that humiliating defeat, we need to win that game. Now, there'll be no Luis, because that might be a good thing, but he's suspended, of course. There's going to be no Mary, bad injury. It looks like he's going to be out for a while. There's going to be no Xhaka, bad injury. He's going to be out for a while. Um, all right, possibly we might see the return of Torreira. But that's a big game, and Brighton are going to be up for it. They need to win this, you know, their survival hopes are, uh, are looking pretty desperate at the moment. They need wins. Massive game for Arsenal. We got nine games, nine cup finals, basically, don't we? It's that's pretty much where we are at now. Um, 27 points to play for if that's nine games. If we've got any chance of getting in the Champions League, we need at least 24 points. And can you see that team getting it? No. <laughs> it's all right being optimistic and it's all right having faith that we can probably do it. And yeah, we can. Look, what I will say is that my mind hasn't changed in the sense that we're still only five points behind fifth place. Remember that. By Saturday, Manchester United could have lost on Friday night and we could beat Brighton and we're two points behind fifth place. You know, and everything could be looking a completely different way around. Or on the flip side of that, Man United could win on Friday, we could lose, and we're eight points behind. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we'll know where we are Saturday night at around about six o'clock in terms of, you know, the placement. And at the end of the day, we've just got – these. this is one of the games, right, when you look at some of the fixtures that we do have coming up, this is one of the games where there's, there's just simply no other alternative. These just to win, have to win. It's as simple as that. I think in the last nine games, if we've got to get pick up 24 out of 27, we can only afford to lose one more game, not even draw. We've got to win eight, lose one. You know what I mean? Or and we've got... And with injuries, I mean, those are injuries well, too. Yeah, we've got to win six or draw three. Do you know what I mean? It's like... And then the thing is about it, right, that in the background, like we said, you've got right, all right. These, in the background, you've got all these problems now. Urza, what happens? Cedric, what happens? David Louise, what happens? It's not good, is it? I mean, we're back to a mess again. It's just really a lot of surgery that needs to be done at this club. We know. We've said it. We've said it so many times. It's like repeating. Careful what you wish for, they used to say, isn't it? What's that? They used to say, careful what you wish for. When, when, hey, when... Robbie, don't, don't get me started. Don't even try. We're at the end of the podcast. It's in the fucking beginning, man. You're pissing me off already today. You're doing my nutting. I had to put up with you for about five hours in uh, that watch along, man. Doing my nutting. And now you're sitting there and now you want to try and bring up Venga. Ah, oh, go fuck yourself, man. Don't even go there. No, 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 no. Listen, do you know what? Do you know what, right? Because this is the thing that pisses me off, right? I see people putting this stat up last night about 26 games and that we've not... What is the... Wait there, what was the fucking record? I swear I took a screenshot here as well because I was going to say this and then I was too tired and I couldn't bother round with everyone. No, I didn't even take the screenshot. Shit. But it was like 26 games, wasn't it? I think it is. That we yeah. haven't won away yeah. from home. And I think it was... It's only the big teams in the, in the top six. Yeah, and like the overall record, the goals conceded, the goals score, it is abysmal. Not one single victory. 26. 
right? And I've got people sitting there saying, be careful what you wish for. Careful what I wish for. How many of those 26 were under Arsene Wenger? Yeah, this hasn't happened since Arsene Wenger left. We haven't started playing shit away from home since Arsene Wenger left. We were shit when Arsene Wenger was manager. That's when the rot started. I still remember even outside of the top six, I remember going to Crystal Palace and getting battered. The humiliation. Do you remember that? Do you know what I mean? Brighton. The places we went to. The places we went to under Arsene Wenger away from home and we were shit. And do you know what? Under Arsene Wenger, we went to the top six sides away from home. Yeah. And we were getting battered 8-2. We were getting battered 6-0. We were getting battered by Man City 6-3. Do you remember all these games? We were getting battered by Liverpool 5-1. Four goals in the first half or something. Don't tell me this bullshit about how it's all now. It's all Unai Emery's fault. He's just a contributing factor to it. I thought I'd just drop that in here. Count well, Dracula. I thought Absolute face, man. No, no, I'm going to say no, because them, they pissed me off. They pissed me off. That they, it's all about be careful what you wish for. What I wish <laughs> for was Arsene Wenger to have left after the cup final against Hull. If I, you had done I, that, I saw people getting at you with it yesterday. I thought, yeah, let me drop it in to wind him up. <laughs> yeah, I bet you did. I'm surprised you didn't fucking drop in about me touching myself during the interview. Well, you know, yeah, I was trying to keep it clean, you know what I mean? But he's, uh, you know, you can so, you were so, you know, so irritated yesterday that you're grabbing your balls. You know what I mean? You know what? You see the thing, yeah? You see why you're bad mind. Yeah, I'll tell you why you're a bad mind in the hand sanitizer for you, yeah? Listen, I'll tell you why you're a bad mind individual, yeah? Because you see you, right? You know full well, right, exactly what the situation, right? And let me explain something, right, for the people that don't actually realise, yeah? But obviously everyone knows, yeah, about my medical condition. I have Crohn's disease, yeah? And then look at him getting his hand sanitizer. Look at him. Fool. Do you know what I mean? But what happened was, yeah, I had stomach cramp. And when I was standing there and I had my hand in my waist, yeah, look at him. <laughs> and it, you're not going to catch anything all the way from there, are you, you fool? Do you know what I mean? Idiot. What was I doing, Robbie? I put my hand there because it takes away. Oi, now you're scaring me. If you actually turn up on Saturday with a pair of rubber gloves, yeah, you can move yourself from me, yeah? Do you know what I mean? You know full well, right, that I put my hand there because it takes the, the elastic away from my stomach and it relieves the pressure. And that's all I was doing. I would literally have my hand there to take away the pressure of my trousers on my stomach. And I was just like, I need to, it, it's comfortable. And then that people are going, oh, you're fixing yourself up a little bit. Yeah, what? They're my balls. I do what the fuck I want with them. Do you know what I mean? Now I know uh, why you're always going on about that sock. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're doing that on fucking sock, you know? What they don't realise, yeah? Do you know the funniest thing, yeah? I'm waiting. I, I, do you know what? I'm, I'm, I was going to joke about it, but it's like, I can see it saying, you know, the best thing about doing all these live podcasts with you and like doing what we do now, it's like I can sit here in my pants and nobody knows. Do you know what oh, I mean? Well, we're much information now. Anyway, I'm listen. Not, I'm not, but you know what I mean? It's just like, I see it, man. Fuck off, man. I'll do it again on Saturday. I'll do it again on Saturday. I'll sit there again. Thanks for, the show. Thanks for watching and listening to the show. Remember, you can get the podcast. Download it on all formats. Just before I go, I've got another present for you, DT. Yeah, <laughs> Listen, you come up, yeah? You, I want to know. Wait, hold on a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute before we even end this show. Hold on a minute. The fact oh. that you have gloves and Vaseline next <laughs> to your computer screen is questionable. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Come back. Come back. Yes, you never thought about that, did you? What have you been up to in front of your computer screen with Vaseline oh, around? Uh, I've got my pants on. Don't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next tweet, <week>, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching the podcast. And we'll be back next week. Let's hope 
we can get a win against Brighton. Football is back. Back again. Yeah. AFTV will be bringing you comprehensive coverage of every game from now until the end of the season. Football's number one narcissist is back. <laughs> back again. Hey. AFTV. Back again.